try it. <laughs> hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. I've got Drew Mahold with me here today. He's been helping with, with the uh, content team for the last couple of years on our YouTube channel. And I'm going to go through the fitting process here and explain you know, what we go through at a, for sec Second Swing Iron Fitting. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about you know, what tendencies that you have in, in your golf game, and we're going to fit you from A to Z. So we're going to start from scratch and give, you, give all the viewers a chance to see what we do in an iron fitting. And we're also going to open it up for questions and answers. So it's going to be a fun process. It's probably going to take 45 minutes to an hour, so it's going to be really exciting to mm -hmm. you know, see how, how your golf game kind of performs as we make these transitions. So first, tell me about your golf game, Drew. Yeah, I've been playing golf quite a bit over uh, the course of the last probably 15 years of my life. Um, probably, a, I think a two and a half handicap is the most recent um, you know, update to my handicap, I believe. So I'm a, I would say an above average player, and I think I get there. A lot of it is just I swing a little faster, hit a little farther than the average player. But um, with that said, I, you know, I'm always looking for ways to improve my iron game. Uh, and of course, a fitting a second swing is the best place to do it. Um, I did get fit in the tour van process about mm, almost a year ago, I think. I think it was last February or March. Um, so I have a set there uh, that I was fit for, but again, a couple of things. Number one, there's a bunch of irons that came out over the, you know, the course of 2020 that I'd like to test out, see if they're better for my game. But also, a golf swing can change quite a bit over you know, probably 10 months or so. Uh, so I'd like to see how that all uh, shakes out on TrackMan and in a fitting here, and so I'm excited to go through this process again. Yeah, this is going to be a very fun process going from kind of A to Z, first starting off taking a look at some numbers with your golf swing and then working our way and trying to fit you into something really good. So mm -hmm. I do uh, ask you if you've got any questions and answers today, I'll be able to chance to jump on and answer some of those questions as we're going through this fitting process here. First off, I'm going to give you this club, give yourself kind of a chance to warm up a little bit. Okay. Um, and then as you're warming up, I'm going to ask you a few interview questions. So I'm going to ask you about your swing tendencies whether you're working with a, a, an instructor, uh, what you're trying to get out of this fitting as well. Let's jump on and give you a chance to kind of get loose and warm up here first. Sounds good. So give you a chance to get loose. We are good there. All right. OK. So if you could, just give yourself kind of a chance to kind of warm up, get loose. Mm -hmm. I could do that. Got some, uh, you got, some, got some speed still here, Drew, which is going to be fun to test today. A little bit. I know I'm watching the videos here. I know you like to keep that club speed number consistent in these types of things. I'm not sure I'll be as, as good as you are at that. Uh, well, not every golfer is the same. So first off, Drew, I want to ask you, what golf ball you use? I normally play about, a, I think it's a Strixon Z-Star. Okay, Strix on Z-Star, so I'm going to see if I can find that golf ball for you to hit. And I, what I'll do is I'll actually get a brand new one here. What I'm doing as I'm grabbing this ball is I'm putting this silver dot on, on the ball. So using TrackMan inside, putting this silver dot on the ball, what this does is it really helps to um, get that spin consistency down. So as you're hitting these shots today, the silver dot that's on this golf ball, I just want to have that facing up. So if you get me that facing up every time okay. you hit. So I'm going to switch golf ball right away here. Sweet. And then as you are hitting, we want to aim for that, that white line that's kind of right in the middle of the screen. That's your, that's your target line. Perfect. So Drew, do you have a typical miss with your irons at all? I've noticed, you know, I usually my miss is to leave the club face open. Okay. Um, that's generally my my problem is I miss kind of short and right because the club face is just a little open. Yep. So. And I do remember when we did the fitting with you, uh, we did go a couple of degrees upright to help get mm -hmm. you to that turn that club face over a little bit. And yep. we'll, what we'll do is we'll start off here soon once you get yourself a chance to warm up and we'll talk about some static lie angle measurements, and then we'll talk about the difference between static and dynamic and what's really important. All right, so sweet. Give yourself a chance to kind of warm up. I'll answer a couple of questions as you are getting loose here. So first question here. So thanks, John, for chiming in. Highly recommend second set of fittings. Had T100Ss or T100s fitted there early to 2020. 
John, thanks for thanks for coming in. We really appreciate your uh, your you for coming in and getting fit with us. Uh, James, I got a question from you, from you here. Uh, so James got a question here. So how to fit a wedge shaft? So this is a great question. So I always like to I, w I always like to. It really kind of depends on, on the player. So normally what I like to do is, for example, myself, I play the Project X LZ 6.5 golf shaft, and that's an extra stiff golf shaft, because I don't quite swing my, uh, my irons quite as fast as, my, my wedge is quite as fast as my irons, as I take a slight step down. So what I do is I will maybe go like to a, like an S400 golf shaft. It's not going to be quite as flexible, but it's still got plenty of weight to uh, help, help, your, help your golf game out there too. So there's really two ways. You can take a slight step down or maybe take a, a step, slight step down, or you can just keep it consistent all the way through. And it really is kind of player dependent and kind of can play around with that. But a lot of tour pros, they will kind of make that slight step down with regards to wedge, wedge shafts. Uh, Eric, good question here. Do you need to be in good shape for a fitting? Is it bad to come in if you haven't consistently played in a few months? Uh, well, I will say in our fitting process is you will get, you'll get worn out, especially if you're doing more than just an iron fitting or you're doing a driver fitting in com combined. What we do is we usually like to test three or four different heads, um, three or four different heads, and then once we find out the correct head, then we'll try some different golf shafts out. And you'll be hitting four or five shots with each one there too. So. Be prepared to hit a lot of golf shots, so yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it's definitely going to be quite the process there as well. So, Drew, are you starting to get? Uh, yeah, speaking of staying in shape, uh, getting for, nice for, and loose for fittings. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm good to go here. You're good to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to jump up and take a look at some numbers on the screen here, and I'm going to come over there to you. Um, so that's kind of just break down some numbers. Can you scroll. Okay. So let's let's take a look up on the screen here. So. I haven't taken out any missets out. I just want to take a look and explain mm -hmm. kind of what we're looking at in a TrackMan fitting. So first thing, club speed. Notice how your club speed's been pretty consistently kind of around about that 90 mile an hour mark. Mm -hmm. So we'll notice we've got a range from about 87.8 was your first one. Your next one was kind of very, very close to kind of 90. So that is a good way for us to figure out what shaft flex you should be playing. So shaft flexes they, and, and weight, they all kind of range. Is a, is a weight with a steel golf shaft from around about 90 grams all the way up to about 130 grams. So as we'll, as we'll do the, the testing here, what we'll do with the irons first is we'll test three or four different iron hits with the same golf shaft so there's no bias. But then what we'll do is we'll dive a little deeper. So then we'll jump in and, and take a look at some different iron, iron shafts and kind of test that weight and see which one kind of performs okay. better for you there as well. And I believe you had the Project X LZ 6.5 Five, yep. correct? Yep. Yep. So that's that one weighs 125 grams. So we'll kind of test and see kind of which one's kind of performing there as well. There are general trends. I don't usually like to say right at the bat what those trends are because I don't want to tell a player, hey, all of a sudden you're going to hit it higher, you're sure. going to hit it lower, because it is player dependent. So that's yep. one thing to kind of keep in mind there too. So that's kind of club speed. That number's not going to change dramatically. It's going to be probably pretty consistent throughout the kind of the, the fitting essentially. Um, one number that may change quite a bit is ball speed. So ball speed, that's more important because it includes where you catch it on the club face. Mm -hmm. In a fitting, ball speed is probably the most important thing to kind of focus on. You get a lot of, you get a lot of ball speed, the ball's going to go a little further. If you don't have as much ball speed, the ball's going to go a little bit shorter. And it's a good way to tell whether you're catching it in the middle of the club mm -hmm. face or not. So ball speed is definitely king. And that's important because You've got different uh, simulation systems out there. You've got TrackMan, you've got GC Quad. They may m read the club speed a little bit differently at times, but the one number that's always consistent is ball speed. Okay. So pay, pay, pay attention to that kind of ball speed number. You can kind of see how you've got a range here from kind of 119 all the way up to 129. So now I say there's a little bit more of a range. That one that was 119, you, you miss it. Mm -hmm. You didn't quite hit it oh, yeah. good. <laughs> one that was 129, you hit it pretty good. So that's kind of the ball speed number there as well. So. In an iron fitting, I don't like to focus so much on smash factor for that one reason, as I, as I mentioned. You can get some differences in, in club speed rating and readings, but just so you kind of know, understand what smash factor is, that is ball speed divided by club speed. So we'll know it is 126.7 divided by 90.3, 1.40. So that's kind of your, your efficiency rating. So that number's up there, it's basically telling us how well you hit it. 
1.38 is like tour average. So notice how you kind of slightly above tour average with regards to that. That could be part of the reason because sometimes TrackMan may, may pick up the club speed just a little bit slower than kind of GC quad across, across the board. Uh, and also it depends on the player. So if you've seen a lot of the videos that I'm in, because I do compress the ball a lot, so my dynamic lofts are very, very low, that number is always going to be quite a lot higher. So okay. good, good efficiency number there, by the way. So that, that's good stuff. Hey, all right, I'll take okay. it. So other numbers we look at, so launch angle. So launch angle at 17.7. .7. I usually like to see the players that have more speed to have that launch angle a little bit lower so we can get ourselves in the optimal window. So the higher the launch, mm -hmm. Ball's more chance that ball's gonna get up, get up in the air. But if you have a lot of speed, you wanna get in that optimal, optimal window. So that launch angle around 17 actually is not too bad. So 15 to 20 is probably a good range for you, for you to be in. Okay. If that face is a little bit more open, usually it's gonna launch a little higher. If that face yeah. is a little bit closed, it's gonna launch kind of a little bit lower there as well. So that's kind of launch angle. Um, spin rate's important, because we wanna stop the ball on the green. So if we take a look at this spin rate here, on average you're at 5,500. Notice there's a little bit of a range, so from 4,500 to 6,000. Normally, if the ball fades, it's going to spin a little bit more. So you're, gonna, you're kind of putting backspin on the ball right. if you put that face a little bit open. If the club face is a little bit more closed, or maybe you catch it on the toe, it's usually going to spin a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So we need spin, but we need to make sure that we have a good landing angle, a good height if we don't have as much spin. So we'll notice your spin rate at 5,500, but you'll notice that your height at 110 feet in the air and landing angle at 48.8, very good. So it tells me that you've got some good stopping power there too. Mm -hmm. So we can definitely focus a little bit more on the playability of the irons as opposed to me trying to fit you into an iron that you need help with to get the ball up in the air essentially. So because mm -hmm. you've got some speed, makes it a little bit easier and because you're a decent ball striker, it'll be a kind of fun one to kind of compare some different irons. So. Good stuff there. All yep. right. Yeah, yeah I'll always, take it. Yeah, I've always <laughs> said in the in the fittings that 100 to 110 feet is kind of a good okay. ballpark to kind of be in for for tour players. So okay. That's, so if it's a little higher than that, there. is maybe where it gets you know you can get those balls up hang up in the wind and it can really affect the dirt the direction of it. Whereas this is kind of your uh, the best uh, best of both worlds there, where it's kind of controlled but also can carry far enough. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's important. You want to you don't want to have so little spin. Or I don't want to fit you in an iron that. Well, for example, a game improvement iron. I would never fit you into a 7-iron mm -hmm. that's got 27, 28 degrees of loft on it because yeah. your dynamic loft's going to be very, very low. Mm -hmm. and that spin rate's going to drop as well. The more loft on the golf club, the more spin, essentially. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're going to be in those kind of the cavity backs, which you kind of wanted to come in and, and take a look at there as well. Um, so notice 186 carry on average going about 194. We'll notice the difference there is about 8 yards. It's good stopping power. So that, that, that's good stuff right there. So that is all like full data with regards to kind of launch and everything like that. Other numbers to focus on, and this is more kind of lesson route, but I just want to kind of understand, kind of, so you understand what these kind of numbers mean. That is kind of your, your club path, your face angle, and your, and your face to path. Mm -hmm. So if we scroll over here to the right, and take a look here, you can see that your club path right here, we'll notice 1.9, it's a positive number. So that positive means to the right, negative means to the left with track map. So that means that your club path is a little bit into out. Okay. And we'll notice that your face angle also is a little bit to the right, so 1.3 to, to the right, but it is closed to your path. So because your face angle is slightly closed to your path, it's going to cause the ball to kind of curve just a little bit to the left. So we'll notice on average about seven mm -hmm. feet to the left. Hmm. So pretty good. Just a tiny little kind of draw here today. I'd say these shots when you said you, you miss sometimes can be a little bit to the right. Yes. So let's kind of talk about those. So we notice these first shots that you hit. Notice that your club path, still kind of a little bit into out, but notice that face angle was open to those. Yeah. And that's why the ball kind of curved to the right there a little bit there as well. Mm -hmm. So kind of interesting numbers. That's, you know, it's important for us to kind of pay attention to that because I want to make sure you do release that club head over, make sure the ball goes straight. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to dive in, especially if you're working with an instructor or anything. I don't want to change any of that stuff. I'm trying to fit you for your golf swing here today. That's kind of the most, most important thing there too. Nice thing with second swing is we do always have our 30 day play guarantee. So we can always make some changes and we do offer follow up fittings there as well. So perfect. I want to make sure, especially this time of the year that you know, you're getting fit for the right kind of club. So do you have any questions? I know, I know this is a lot of stuff. So it is, it is. I, I love numbers, but you know, yeah, it's a lot, and of, a lot of stuff. I mean, I've been doing stuff like this you know, on, on YouTube and stuff for a while, so I am aware of this stuff. Yep. But you know, I, can, I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff at first to take in. And so a lot of these, num these, these data measurements, they do mean a lot. 
and they're very important to generating the best possible results. So, uh, I mean, they're all very valuable. They have their own meaning to the golf swing. But uh, I personally don't have any questions. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff, and it's, it's great that we have all this information to really dial in the swing. Uh, that's the best part about these fittings. Okay, so the next step in our fitting process is where I start to get some measurements from you. So I talked about kind of that, that, static, mm -hmm. that, that static measurement. So that's kind of your wrist of floor measurement. So I'm going to get a measurement from you, a wrist of floor. You're six, six feet tall, right? Yes. Six feet. So we'll get that. We'll talk about how that relates to kind of lie angle, but also we'll talk about how dynamic, essentially dynamic lie is also more important because we want to pay attention to where the ball is going mm -hmm. and how you're catching that impact on, on the ball with regards to the club face interaction okay. there too. So let's next get a couple of measurements. this to the side all right and just because I'm gonna be within six feet of you I'm gonna put my mask on probably a good call all right so let's get a wrist of floor measurement so your wrist of floor if we measure this here is like 36 and basically 36 and a half and you're you're six feet right mm -hmm. So six feet, and I also want to get a hand measurement. So hold your hand out like that. So this will be important for us as well. So do a hand measurement. You're like eight and a quarter, and we're about three and a three and a half essentially. So I'll be writing these stuff this stuff down on the custom order form for us to kind of remember. But let's first touch on what these kind of numbers kind of mean. So static measurements. We like to use the ping color code chart essentially. So if we look here. We'll notice 36, we intersect that with, uh, with six feet, with six, 36, 36 and a half with intersect with, with six feet. You'll notice kind of right around to that kind of that top end of that green dot. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of important for us to kind of pay attention to. So we want to make sure that we um, get you in the right kind of mm -hmm. area there. So that's important. Um, but we also will test this uh, dynamically as well. Talked about your, hand, your grip measurement here as well. You've got slightly larger hands. So if we take a look here, white is considered standard. So if we look here, we go, you're like eight and a, mm -hmm. eight and a half, right? To three and a quarter or something like that. You're yep. basically smack right in the, in the goal area right there. Okay. So that's telling me gold tells me you're kind of, kind of like a, a mid-size grip essentially okay. there too. So we'll, we'll make sure we get the right grips on the, on the clubs when we order them for you there as well. Do you have okay. any questions about kind of lie angle or hand measurements or? I, I really don't. That's, uh, I mean, Ping's, Ping really does that well where they kind of display it all and color code it like that. So that's really good nice to have as well okay yeah so typically the player that is a little bit more a little taller usually plays a more upright line angle where yeah. a player that has a little bit shorter usually plays a little bit of a ladder line angle okay but keep in mind it's always player dependent and yeah. helps with ball flight yeah uh, what, what kind of ball flight you're trying to achieve essentially mm -hmm. there too. so let's move back over here okay so is there any irons that you wanted to try today um, yeah I, like I mentioned I really wanted to maybe take a look at some of those new ones released in 2020 yeah uh, you kind of talk about like the Mizuno JPX 921 maybe the tour okay. um, the X Forge CB from Callaway uh, those were a couple on the top of my head that I would just be interested in to compare them kind of to what I'm playing because I also play the i210 as well is the one I was fit for uh, most recently, so those three okay. for sure. And you, I think you did mention Srixon mm -hmm. as well. You're yeah, interested yeah, in the Srixon the, the ZX7. Too. I know maybe don't have fitting components in yet for that. Um, yeah. So what we can do for that is I do have like a, a demo club here. So for us to test, so I mentioned we like to test with the same golf shaft when we're doing it, doing doing an iron fitting. So I do have the a, a demo club. We don't have the fitting components yet, but I've got the Modus 120S golf shaft. So we know that you're, with your club speed being close to 90 miles an hour, you're yeah. pretty much kind of in extra stiff. Mm -hmm. But it's already kind of a fairly heavy, heavy golf shaft as well. So I feel comfortable doing the head test with the same golf shafts with this, because I know you really kind of wanted to hit this one. Yeah. So we will include this in the mix, and we'll test those other iron models out with that same golf shaft oh, there perfect. as well. Oh, okay. perfect. Uh, which, which I know what we've got in stock. So we've got, we do have the Modus 120 stiff, in Ping, TaylorMade, Mizuno, and Callaway. So we've got some options here. Let me grab those heads out. And so what we will do in a iron fitting is we'll hit four or five shots with each one. So let me create some tags okay. here. So let's first start 
So let's start with Mizuno. So let's, uh, let's switch over here to the Mizuno JPX 921 Tor. I'll put that club head on. Okay, so I'll give you that club there. Sweet. And let me just do this. JPX 921 Tor. Okay, and then we got the Modus 120S. Okay, so if you want to hit five shots with that one, then we'll try all the different heads and we'll, we'll compare the numbers with the head test. Okay. And then we'll dive deeper into the, into the shaft test. Okay, perfect. And Drew, are you working with an instructor? I am not, actually. You're not? Okay. I maybe should be, do though. You, do you have any <laughs> physical limitations or anything like that with regards to body limitations? Um, or? No, I don't no? think so. Okay. <laughs> not the most flexible person, if that sure. counts. All right. And as you're hitting here, I'm going to just kind of jump on some of these questions. We've got a lot of questions. Thanks for joining everyone today as well. JPX 921 Tour feels really nice. Feels really good. Well, feel was definitely very, very important in a iron fitting. There's that face wide open. Okay, so I'm going to just jump on a couple of questions here. And I nice thing with TrackMan is we've always got that delete button. I can take <laughs> that out there if it's, if it's definitely an outlier as well. So Caleb, thanks for jumping on on the wedge um, wedge question there with regards to shaft. So if you're an S300 guy, irons play S400 is a little soft set. Yeah, it's not bad to go just a little bit heavier. And it's all player dependent as well. Um, is there a, an occasion where the second van makes its way to Texas? I know we're working on trying to open up more stores in the US and uh, hopefully Texas will be a, another location here in, in the future. And yeah, Caleb, thanks. The second swing tour van isn't actually a van. It's our, our five locations we have our a fitting components in. That one sounded really solid. I, that's the highest ball speed I've seen. Oh, that was good there. I also swung a little harder, but. Okay. So I do want to just bring up those shots. So you hit five, as I mentioned, we'll hit five shots with each one. So we notice we got those four mm -hmm. shots. Let's switch this to carry distance. Mention I can take out a miss hit if I need to, so we know that one left that face a little bit open. So I'll just, well, I won't delete it. I'll just kind of keep it up there as well as we're kind of testing these these numbers there too. So that's first. That's the Mizuno JPX 921 Tour. You said it felt pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it did felt pretty very much. Yep, Mizuno feel, in, you know, they oh, they yeah. always kind of feel pretty solid. Yeah, I, say. I played Mizuno irons before my most recent fitting, and I, that was my favorite part was the feel. Yeah, and you, you jumped to the ping, right? Was yep. it? Okay. Ping I-210, well, a combo with I-500, okay. uh, but I-210 and seven iron to pitching wedge. Okay, well, speaking of I-210, that's our next one I want to throw in the mix right. here, too. So we got five heads we'll test today. Perfect. Now I'll just change that tag over. Okay. So if you want to hit uh, five shots with that one for me. So Mark, previously custom fit for I-210 irons, but would like, uh, would like something a little bit more forgiving like the Ping G410. Would I just order the same spec or would I need another full fitting? It's a good question. I'd say important for kind of gapping to kind of pay attention to. Um, what I would suggest is I would, your lie angle is not going to change too much there as well, but make sure uh, you, you're gapping, especially with your wedges and with your hybrids. The loft on the seven iron and loft on the pitching wedge is going to be a little stronger, so make sure you pay attention to your gapping there as well. But if you want something more forgiving, fly a little higher. The G410 is definitely a great option. 
a good question here from Adam. Do you only fit the latest models? If not, how many years back a product do you typically carry? We have everything. So second swing, we fit, we fit new and used. So our tour van fittings, we, f we focus majority on new, but we, our in-flight fittings, we do focus on used pubs as well. So we've got that option there, which is, which is awesome here at second swing. And that really kind of sets ourselves apart. And I will say on that too, our fittings are free with purchase. Right, okay. I think I got one got, more You here. got one more there to go? Yep. Okay. I felt a little low on the face, but turned out okay. Not a bad, not a bad miss there as well. So that's, I always like to kind of pull those up and kind of pay attention to some numbers. So do show all. And we'll notice kind of this time around, the one outlier was the one that was over to the left. Let's take your warm ups away. So this one here, we can kind of see. Nice little tight dispersion there. And that's one thing we have definitely noticed with Ping uh, 210, I210s mm -hmm. is very, very good with regards to kind of consistency there yeah. as well. So we'll take a look at all the numbers as we kind of compare them all here eventually. But let's move on to the next club. So Srixon ZX7. Oh, yeah. How did the 210 feel compared to the Mizuno? Because I know I made, yeah. I got you to switch from Mizuno to, to right. Pink, so. I mean, it wasn't as soft. Uh, it's definitely, I mean, it's solid and it's it's pleasing. Um, it's not it's not as soft as Mizuno, I'd say. But uh, give me a second here just to change to yep. do this. Well, this the X7 has. Well, the, the 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 difference is between those two is. Um, Mizuno's, you know, forged. It's right. got that forged, forged soft feel to it, yep. where Ping is kind of like that, that cast kind of feel to it there as well. Yep. So it's a little bit different with regards to feel. Yeah, this one's, uh, the Shrixon ZX7 is forged, and yep. I can tell looking at, it uh, has a di kind of a different shape. It seems a little smaller looking down at it um, in terms of the overall size, but the top line is a little bit thicker, it seems like, than the previous two. Got it. All right, so let's hit five with that one. Question here, I was, re I was fitted for a Roar White 75S Tor 80 XC 6X, was about one, flight t one to two percent better, with more, but more expensive, so I ended up with the uh, White. Now I have upped my swing speed from one or five to 110. Should I refit of that? That's a good question. At 105 to 110, you definitely are kind of borderline between the, between the two of them. Um, you know, it really comes down to, yes, Tor 80 is gonna be I think it's like $250 up upcharge. Um, it really comes down to the player whether you see the value in playing the, the, the more premium golf chef. I'd say keep in mind that the Roar 75S, even though it is a stiff sh shaft, it's gonna be heavier. So it's actually gonna be maybe help keep that spin rate down even with regards to kind of the weight there too. So it's really kind of player dependent. I can't say one shaft's gonna be way better than the other. It's just gonna be, uh, it's, it really kind of depends on the player. There's a miss. Okay, good question here. What priority would you place on fitting order? It sounds like ball speed first, then dispersion, then distance. Now that's a good question. Now I didn't touch on dispersion. Dispersion is very, very important with, with, an, with an iron. We wanna make sure uh, that we are hitting in the right location. Um, so dispersion for sure is very important. But ball speed is, I mean, if you're losing a lot of ball speed, you're just not going to hit the ball in the, in the right window, essentially, there, too. So definitely kind of important to kind of pay attention to. So let's jump direct back here to Drew's last five shots here. That last one I hit was just nuked. It was just <laughs> nuked? All right, let's yeah. take a look and see. It really caught that one good. Oh, we can find out here. So, yeah, you've got, you got, you got kind of the one outlier per club so far. <laughs> But yeah, you said kind of nuked, and yeah, you definitely jumped on that one a little bit more. 135.2, wow, that, that Smash Factor is, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's part of the reason why I, I definitely don't like um, like Smash Factor for, for, mm -hmm. for an iron, because all of a sudden you're seeing these numbers and you're like, well that just, it seems, seems higher than it, than it probably should be. 
Um, I don't have dynamic loft up here. Let's add that up here as well. There we go. And so I, I, must, be t I must have taught you a few things or two here, Drew, because you're <laughs> compressing the ball really well. So your dynamic loft, look at that, 20.4. It's very, very good mm -hmm. stuff there too. So how'd the Strixon ZX7 feel? Uh, it felt really, really good. It did, um, yep. especially, I mean, there, it does have, a, it's almost comparable to Mizuno in terms of the feel, I thought. Um, I would say it's a, it sounded, seemed like it was a little louder sound-wise, um, but I didn't seem, it didn't, to me, seem like the feel was that different from Mizuno. Yeah, and it was going a little bit further. It's just kind of interesting that your club speed was a little bit less with the, the restriction on ZX7. But check out that ball speed, and yeah. that's loft. It's mm -hmm. pure, pretty loft. Yeah, I was going to say, this has to be stronger loft, I'm it's like 31 or 32 okay. degrees. Because I know the, the JPX yep. 921 Tour is 34. 30, 34, and then the, uh, you got the Ping I-210 is 33. So okay. you can kind of see that's also why your smash factor is kind of yep. a lot higher there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of showing kind of the, the efficiency there as well. Uh, and that's why the ball was spinning a little bit less there too. So the nice thing with the Strixon ZX7 is um, the, the, the sole, the VT sole with those irons, yeah. it's really good for a player that kind of has a steep attack angle and really spins the ball a lot so it really reduces the spin and really helps with turf interaction there yeah. too. So it's 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 juicy. It it, it, goes, oh, yeah. it goes pretty pretty far there too. So you definitely hit some pretty solid shots there yeah. as well. You see that spin went down too. I mean I was up near six thousand with the ping one and you know fifty three hundred with yeah. the uh, the on. Yeah. I don't know if you need to hit it that far. I don't think I do. Dispersion <laughs> is definitely yeah. uh, definitely important there as there as well. So let's maybe go back to closer to a more kind of traditional loft here. So okay. let's try the Callaway X-Forged CB Kay. as well. This one's definitely more kind of squared off, it seems like, at, okay. for the, uh, down to the dress. It's more squared off versus the, the ZX-7 kind of had a more rounded profile to it, it seemed like. Got it. And I haven't asked you yet how the golf shaft has felt. Can you know, I mean, it's like I mentioned, this Modus 120S. Mm -hmm. It's a stiff golf shaft, but it, how has it felt to you? Have you noticed It does seem different? a little bit uh, easier, easier to kind of to get through at impact, okay. I guess. Um, okay. I well, mean, I know it's a little different than what I'm used to. It's, you know, I'm used to a uh, 6.5 LD, so. Yep. A little different, but... It's just a little little bit lighter and a little bit more softer flex to it, but we'll definitely test the shaft after we figure out which head we want to go with. So a good question here for, from Henry. Continuing that question, how and when do you adjust physical factors like length and lie? So around about six feet in height is when I start kind of that conversation whether we should be playing a little longer, um, longer club because we want to make sure that we don't feel comfortable when, when and slumped over or anything like that. Um, yeah, and then lie angle, as I mentioned, dynamic lie is number one, but static lie is usually pretty pretty accurate as well. And thank you, Crusher74. I agree, ball speed is no good if you can't hit the target. You don't wanna, so usually ball speed is going to be faster if you pull hook it. If you pull hook the shot, it's gonna be a lot faster. And you don't wanna do that. Okay, Michael, good question. Uh, regarding the dot on the ball when using Trackman, does it have to be the metallic stick on one? Or can the same effect be achieved by a silver Sharpie? I actually have never used a silver Sharpie. I've only ever used the metallic stick on ones. I really kind of push them in. So I think it's gotta be um, the the, the metallic, so far from what, I've, from what I've seen, is what it's doing is it's putting up the reflection of that ball spinning towards the, the screen. Well, I had three that are very close together, and then I had my first two shots were both kind of chunky. Yeah, so. I, I noticed you were, you were chuckling a little bit there too. So if you actually, you want to hit one more, because I know you had a couple in there you didn't quite catch there. The other ones were performing pretty well. So yeah. we'll give us one more, one more chance and, and throw in the mix. A good question here from Caleb. From my past fitting, is a good fitter we check in loft and lie as the fit is happening or in the very beginning? So we definitely touched on what static measurement is uh, and where, where we should be with regards to kind of lie. And we're seeing it right off the bat how 
loft, for example, oh, yeah. is important here too. So loft on the on the golf club, mm -hmm. we're kind of seeing that so far. The more loft you've you've had on the club, the little straighter it was going with those ones, and then the ones that were further were spinning a little bit less mm -hmm. and, and kind of going there as well. So distance is important, but not the most important thing right. with irons, that's for sure. So oh, yeah. dispersion and, and ball speed is. I think especially different. for me personally, I don't. I'm, I'm not looking to gain distance from irons. Uh, I know that's obviously a goal for a lot of golfers is to hit, you know, if you want to have, you know, a seven iron and two green instead of a five iron, uh, that's, a, you know, obviously a goal that you want. But for me, you know, I don't really need to get more distance. I'm just trying to keep things more under control. Okay. So. Yeah. And that's, that's important to know because you want to talk with your fitter about what is more important. I mean, you come in for a, a fitting and you're just like, I just want to hit my irons far. I'm like, mm. well, we can do that if that's what <laughs> you want. End of the day, it comes down to what the player wants and we'll yeah. help them that. But I'll definitely educate them and say, hey, why yeah. is this one more important at the end of the day? You want to hit more greens? You want to have stopping power? Yeah. And you want to score better. So mm -hmm. usually you get that, those three combinations right. are going to work better there as well. So uh, we hit uh, we hit six shots of this one. And we had a couple of good shots and a couple of kind of misfits in there. Um, let's just take <laughs> out those ones that you did kind of miss it a little bit. And then that one you left the face a little <laughs> bit open there as well. Um, you had three good ones. Yeah, three, three nice, three nice solid shots there, there as well. Uh, how did the X Forge CB feel overall? Overall, uh, it felt pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I think, you know, I'm actually kind of relatively impressed with how the miss hits performed because I mean those were pretty chunky shots. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I was due for a couple of those and it kind of happened in a row. But uh, I, I'm impressed. I mean, this is it's a clean looking club too. I like I like it more kind of squared off down at a dress the way the X Forge CB looks. Yeah, it's, it's a good, I, I definitely have, have liked the look of the X-Force CB. Um, it's got a little bit of forgiveness. Now that plate on the back of the mm -hmm. club, it's, it's there to help with swing weight purposes there. Uh, it's going to help to fine tune the, for the player there as, mm -hmm. as well too there. So once again, good, good forged feel with, with those irons. Uh, let's finish up with the uh, P7MC. Oh, okay. Finally, and then we'll uh, take a look at the numbers with all the, the clubs. Nice. Yeah, this one's new too from, new uh, there as well, yep. I think, last summer or fall. Okay. All right, this one might be the thinnest top line I've seen. All right, that's good feedback. Do you, you like the look of that? I think I do. Okay. You know what, let me just hit the five shots and I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> and I apologize to all of you who have a hard time keeping up with all the questions. I do appreciate all the, all the feedback. We'll, we'll try and work on getting caught up here. So a good question here. Last time you fit at the end, he was measured for mid-sized grips. Is going is that going to be fit using mid-sized grips? So, ideally, I would love to because that's what the hand size measurement showed up here at Harris at the, the beginning. But what a lot of what we got with regards to fitting components, and it's just a, a cost thing, is we don't have every single golf shaft and every single um, option there in a mid-size in a standard grip. But we'll definitely talk about the advantages and disadvantages mm. for him to play a mid-size grip or standard. Here's a miss hit to take out. <laughs> and then thanks, Caleb. Usually watch ball flight and then use a sharpie like sharpie line. Uh, I'm gonna also just gonna jump in here too. So this golf this golf ball right here, a lot of people use this this golf ball here that's got the line straight down the middle of there too. You use that for for line angle as well. So there's two there's really I guess there's three ways you can fit for dynamic lie angle. Um, you got your traditional ping lie board. Uh, I'm not always a huge fan of lie board. It definitely educates you, shows you, but everyone's playing different with regards to lie board and it's also raised up in the air. You've got direction, dispersion, and that's kind of the most kind of important <laughs> thing as well. And then we have the, the golf ball with Sharpie line through it, or you've got the, the, the cut straight through it there as well. And Callaway has sent us a few of these a year, which is, which is good to put face tape on the club face there as well. Okay, Drew. All right, so it, I, my guess is the loft on this is a little higher. Yep, 34. Okay. 34, yeah. A little while, little higher than a couple of the others. Yep. Um, just because it seemed like the ones I f felt like I hit really well, and there's actually the one out to the left that I would have thought maybe would go farther than it did. Um, but again, the higher lofted club, it does make sense that it didn't quite carry, say, as far as the, the X7. 
Yeah, it was, it was going a little, little bit shorter, and you had that one out there to the short right there as well. I'm just going to take that one there away. Let's see what one that one is there. It's just for the shortest distance. There you go. Okay. So you can see, yeah, it's a little bit shorter. Now, this is, this is a good kind of topic to kind of bring up with regards to kind of east to west dispersion. So we'll notice here as we're, as we're looking at the numbers, and we'll kind of jump up here and take a look here in, in a second. Um, what I'll do is I will bring up the, uh, the screen here and take a look at all the, all the numbers there. Um, let's look here. So look at, speaking of dispersion, notice this green circle that's pretty far east to west. Mm -hmm. That's probably not going to hit the green every single time. Yeah. Now we, we look at the scale here. Scale is pretty good. We'll notice we're kind of pretty much kind of within 15 yards, kind of each each way there as well. But you will notice these dots are all fairly far apart. So if it was me, I would probably say that would probably be the first one that I would kind of eliminate right off the sure. bat. Now I know I was I was talking a lot while you, while you were hitting it. Can, it could definitely kind of be distracting here as well. <laughs> while uh, <laughs> while in a normal fitting, I wouldn't be talking, and you're doing, a, <laughs> doing a, you're doing a great job to concentrate here too, just to showcase. Yeah. And oh yeah. You know, oh, I know. In, a, in, a, in a proper fitting, without me talking, doesn't faze me. I'm kind of mentally tough, too, Thomas. I'm mentally tough. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we can kind of see here uh, if we look at. Let's see. So if, if we look, you know, that would be the the green circle would be the one that I would kind of take away right off the bat, and that's the P7MC. Didn't quite hit it kind of as well. If we look at ball speed, and I'm take these away, um, your highest ball speed, I mean, your lowest ball speed was kind of down there with regards to P7 MC, but mm -hmm. also your dispersion pattern was kind of a, a little bit off there as well. So probably the first one I would eliminate, uh, unless you told me, hey, I absolutely love that club. Yeah. Yeah. You I love that club or? Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say more than the others. It's a okay. great, I mean, it looks awesome. Again, I like the, like that. it's a thin top line and much thinner. Um, but in terms of performance, I, I think there's just some dispersion patterns that are a little bit better than this one. Okay, yeah, no, I, I would agree. And a lot of times I'll ask customers and say, it's pretty simple. Which circle do you like up there on that yeah, screen? Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Which, which circle? I and mean, I mean, for me, I think it's gonna be ping I-210. Just as, I mean, it looks like the small circle. Now, in terms of being overall the straightest, I think there's, you know, like the Mizuno JPX 921 Tour is pretty straight in terms of having kind of misses, or I mean, excuse me, uh, shots on both sides of the center yep. line. Um, and then, I, I mean, the uh, X4 CB is also pretty nice too, but I think the smallest circle is what I'm going for in terms of, I just want consistency, right? And I yep. think the I-210 seems to be the smallest one up there. Yeah, and what I will say here too is what we did with regards to kind of with, with lie angle is I gave you standard lie, and yeah. we know that you statically fit at, at two degrees upright. Mm -hmm. Well, we, if we're gonna shift that, shift that two degrees upright a little bit over here to the left, it's Gonna bring a bring us kind of yeah. smack kind of in the middle there there as well too. So which is gonna be kind of important. And we'll, we'll we'll touch on that lie angle piece there a little bit after we test the the golf shafts out and just to confirm that lie angle mm -hmm. piece there. That yeah, totally kind of see there. But let's just talk about numbers overall and just kind of explain kind of what we do look at and kind of what the differences are. Um, so I'm gonna focus more on between club speed and landing angle because these other numbers that tack angle, club path, face angle. That's that's you. Yeah, that, that, that is, that is me swinging the club. club. Yeah. So you did an excellent job here, Drew, at swinging about the same speed with each one. Kind of interesting. You can see you got a range of 91.4 all the way up to 93.2. As I mentioned, that number's not going to always, not going to change a lot, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, ball speed. So ball speed's always fun to kind of look at. So your highest ball speed was the X-Forged CB. Kind of interesting there. It's not actually the strongest loft either. It's about 33 degrees of loft on it. Strix on ZX7 has got a little bit more, a little bit less loft on it than, but it, you notice it performed pretty well. But you'll notice these two, the ones with the least amount of loft went mm -hmm. the furthest. Um, if we take a look at the other end of the spectrum here, these other ones were kind of pretty similar. We're talking 129.7, 128.2 as well there too. But consistency is also very important as well. And I like to look at the little numbers. You can see little numbers here. <laughs> Anything kind of below two is always pretty, pretty good. Now, if, if your ball striking is a little bit off or you're fit into more of a game improvement number, that number is going to always going to be kind of a little bit larger there too. So yeah, anything that's consistent is always kind of important. We talked about smash factor and how loft and dynamic, loft on the club and dynamic mm -hmm. loft will influence that. Well, 1.38, and we'll see here with a 
33 degree ping I210, you're kind of right at what 1.38 is for track members considered standard for, for professional there. Okay. So that's pretty good there. These other ones, Strixon has the least amount of loft on it. That's why that smash factor was kind of yeah. higher there too. Um, if we look over here at spin, so I always like to kind of talk about spin consistency. Mm -hmm. And spin consistency is kind of very, very important. We want spin and we'll notice that there's a couple here that gave us a little more spin, the higher lofted club. Um, and then your lower lofted clubs gave us a little bit less spin there as well. But spin consistency, ping I210, did it again. Yeah. Iron fittings for me, when I've been doing a lot of iron spinning, it's, it's always performed really well. And yeah. I think that's the reason why ping just haven't come out with a replacement. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's and been that player's a while. cavity yeah. category. Yeah. I mean, yep. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm currently fitted into them, <laughs> so <laughs> I would I would endorse them. Yeah, uh, if we look here at carry distance, you'll notice we've got a range from one eighty three point seven to one ninety seven point eight. So then that would come down to, you know, player dependent. Hey, do you want to fit in a club that just goes far? Yeah. Or do you want dispersion? And mm -hmm. I think as a better player, we know that, and I mean most players would know that answer with an iron. Hopefully they understand that direction is more important than distance. Yeah. Yeah. And then height, we'll notice height, pretty consistent across the board here, around about kind of 120 feet in the air. Landing angle is pretty good there as well. So if it was me, I for sure would, you know, I'd come down and kind of look at that and just say, you know, this map here is kind of important. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Ping, Ultimately, where's yeah. the golf ball going to end up? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah, I like so that, you know, if I can keep that, I mean, especially if, like you mentioned about the line angle, if I can move that just a little bit left um, with a couple of degrees upright on my line yep. angle, that, that would be kind of, I think, the ideal circle for me. What I'm okay. looking to do. Well, let's actually test that. Um, well, actually, no, let's, let's first do the, the golf shaft because I okay. want to just test a couple of different golf shafts uh, just to kind of see what's going to complement your, your, your head better, and then we'll test the, the okay. line angle there too. So if you don't mind, Drew, I'm going to just run and, and grab just a couple of different golf shafts yep. in our other fitting bays. So we're going with ping. Kay. Let me grab a couple that are gonna change the weight around. If you mind, just keep everyone entertained for a minute <laughs> or so. Yeah, I can do that. All right, let's see what we got for comments here. You guys like my swing? Johnny likes my swing in the comments here. Um, but yeah, so this is, uh, for those who don't know, um, I'll just reiterate again. So I was fit for irons back in uh, February, I believe. Um, so when I actually was fit for ping I-210, um, and I wasn't actually planning, uh, you know, this wasn't the plan, but to come in and um, have the same club be sort of the winner, so to speak, for my, my own fitting. Um, because you know, these are new iron models that I didn't have in my fitting last time. Last time, I did not have X4 CB or I did not have uh, JPX 921 Tour, things like that. So just trying to test my gamers out against maybe something that is uh, you know, newer and maybe see if there's something that I can achieve better performance. Uh, looks like I-210 though right now for me is the most consistent here. So, um, but yeah, I, I do want to say, as Thomas looks like he's back here, but. Uh, I do appreciate everybody joining for this, watching this. Uh, we're going to try to do more of this in the future in terms of live stuff. Uh, and then, of course, you guys can also, by all means, come in for a fitting as well um, and you know, get your scheduled for a tour van. You can get a, f a fitting experience like this. All right. And I am, uh, I'm back here, so I ran over and grabbed three golf, freedom golf shafts here to test with. Kay. So I mentioned I want to kind of test that weight around a little bit. I don't want to go in anything crazy light because you already do have a decent amount of speed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to test the um, CB, KBS Tour C Taper golf shaft. It's a very, very kind of low torque, uh, low spinning golf shaft there as well. It's got the Project X LZ 6.5. That one weighs 125 grams. Kay. And then we also have the Modus 120X. So you are hitting the 120S. So it'll be interesting to kind of okay. see if you can notice any difference in, in the golf shaft yeah. flex. Um, I'm not gonna say you will. If you can tell me if one feels better than the yeah. other, let me know. Okay. But once again, that is also kind of player dependent right. and player dependent on how everyone kind of reacts there as well. So in an ideal world, I would hand you these golf shafts and I would say, don't look at the golf shaft, 
right. you already kind of know a, a decent amount of golf shafts there too. Ideally, it would be blind test, but let's kind of test some, these golf shafts out and let's okay. see how they all kind of perform against each other. So we've got switching the club head over here. And unfortunately, the I-210 green dot head is currently being used in a fitting right now. So okay. I, can't, I can't grab that. That would be a good time for me to kind of transition and, and check out that kind of line goal and yeah. see how that performs here too. But uh, fittings kind of take priority oh, over, awesome. yeah, yeah. <laughs> over, over what we're kind of doing, doing right now. But we'll see if we can, we'll definitely kind of look at the line goal piece a little bit there and see how everything kind of performs. Okay, so we got C taper 130X. Interesting. And that golf shaft is not graphite. It may look like it is, but it's. Uh, oh, my golf ball's right there. <laughs> Sorry, oh, golf ball. Okay. There you go. Oh, let's hit some shots with that. Okay. And did we happen to get caught up on any of these questions at all? I kind of was starting to address them, and then you returned. <laughs> so I, uh, I apologize I, for those. I should have stayed away longer. <laughs> Ooh, that's a little fat. Uh, is that where we're at now? Okay. Right, down. I, th I, th okay. I saw somebody ask about my lofts. Um, if I was being, if I was retro, okay. lofted for my irons, and so I will say that you know, I my lofts are a little unique because I comboed with the i500. Yep. And so I believe I went um, stronger by one in the i210s and weaker by one in the i500s to make that combo work out. So okay. they're not exactly what you'll see on like, you know, the official specs, but that's what I ended up doing for the combo set purposes. Got it. There we go. Do you happen to know what question you were up to here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I that was don't. a good shot, by the way, that last swing. That was an excellent swing. Yeah, let's just do that every single time. Yeah. I'll, I'll stop distracting you. <laughs> Okay, Jimmy P, I'm gonna answer this question real quick. I have Mizuno HMBs, one degree upright, should I my wedges follow suit? I read somewhere that sand wedge and maybe log wedge should be upright, maybe even flat. Uh, I like to do either go a little bit flatter or keep it consistent across the board. Usually like a little bit flatter if you like to open, open close that club face with your wedges around the green. Uh, Johnny, try him with the P770. He has a perfect swing for that. Uh, I, Johnny, good. Uh, P770 is awesome. I've, I've done a lot of testing with P770. My concern would be uh, with him would be he doesn't need to hit the ball any further. Oh, the P770, yeah. yeah. I just remembered. <laughs> yeah. P770, in our, I mean, we've got some rockets out of the P770. Yeah. Been hitting that club. There we go. Oh, very nice. All right. Well, we got that same trend of kind of yeah, one missed hit and then uh, one missed hit in there. Let's see if we can find that one missed hit that's a little bit shorter. Okay, so it's that one there. Okay, so yeah, so kind of interesting. A little heavier golf shaft. You did just kind of. I mean, we didn't just change the line, go out there at all. But it's kind of interesting how. You got the three that were just a little bit to the right still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one you kind of turned over there as well. But yeah, pretty good dispersion pattern. And yeah, I could definitely you know. feel it just a little bit heavier. Uh, yep. I just feel, I mean, it's not like it was uh, obnoxious you know, or anything like that, but I definitely noticed that it's just a little bit heavier, but I mean, did it doesn't bother me. Did you, okay, so speaking on the weight, did you feel like you liked the lighter or you liked the heavier? It see, I almost, almost, I think I like it heavier just because I think it's a little easier to control and I think you know, in terms of, like, if I, you know, whip the club down and the face is open, I feel like it wouldn't open as much, maybe, with a stiffer and heavier shaft. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can see that. Just, just turn it over just a little bit, little bit easier there, uh, comparing kind of numbers between the two of them. They're, you know, going. Yeah. Just going a couple yards further, a little bit less spin because you turn it over just a little bit more. But yeah, excellent across the board there. You notice with the slightly heavier golf shaft, you lost just a little bit of club speed comparing it to the. Yeah. 
Uh, the mode is 120. Which is so okay with me. I mean, okay with you. Yep. Well, let's um, let's skip. I was gonna throw in the Modus 120X, but let's skip all of that. Let's let's go something okay. kind of in between. And this is, I think, this is what you've been playing here too. So, I want to see. We've got the Project X 6.5LZ. It's a popular golf shaft in this room. <laughs> um, I've been playing that golf shaft for the last kind of two or three years myself. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I like the LZ stands for loading zone, so it's just a little bit softer kind of kind of midsection mm -hmm. in there as well. So throw that in the mix. Okay. All right. Starting the same way. Question here: Should people with vertical backswings have upright lie angles for clubs? It really kind of depends on how you deliver that club at impact. As I mentioned, it's the dynamic lie at impact, and pay attention to where the golf ball goes. But if you have a more vertical golf swing, you probably are a little bit taller, I would guess. Uh, okay, I play a 65 gram shaft and want to get into a steel shaft, what do you recommend? Um, well, I actually just did an, a, a, a video here recently of the Modus Zelius 6. That was a uh, steel golf shaft, and it weighs around about 68 grams, I believe. Um, it's the lightest steel golf shaft on the market. It's a good start. Otherwise, you've got your little heavier golf shafts, like your XP 90s and 95s. Good options there, there as well. They actually got the Elevate now as the, as the new replacement for True Temper. Anders, thanks for chiming in here. Did, uh, did an iron retro fit with me if they can swing in the console location this year? Awesome guy. Thanks, Anders. Thanks for joining us today. They, there cannot be worse colors up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, unfortunately, we don't. Let's take a look at these colors. <laughs> uh, let me see this here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to choose the colors on, on TrackMan, so this is always <laughs> going to make it a little, little bit hard to kind of dissect there as well. So let's look and see here. So we got the red, we got a purple, and we got kind of in between red and purple, which is, which is good. But I think you can. I think you get the idea. Yeah. That is uh, that's pretty good, actually. You get the kind of the, the idea right there that head's performing. Yeah. I mean, that's why we fit to the head first. Mm -hmm. Now, it really kind of is play dependent, but the Loft on the golf club is going to kind of do its job. Mm -hmm. But, wow, that is good. Uh, I, I why are you so surprised? I feel <laughs> really good about my fitting that I did you for you uh, yeah. back in 2020 at the beginning of the year. Well, I so. think it, now, I, I think I'm impressed with the i210 because, I mean, not that those other models were bad or anything, but for me personally, it's still kind of the best option for me and what I'm looking to do with my game, be consistent. I don't need the extra distance, which it seems like this thing doesn't necessarily have the most pop to it. Yep. The I-210, but it's definitely, you know, in terms of a small dispersion and consistency, it's right there. Yeah, consistency for sure is the most important thing, consistency and dispersion, everything mm -hmm. there as well. So let's kind of like take a look at these golf shafts, and you might be getting just a little tired here at the end. I know I gave you a chance to oh, yeah. warm up a little bit, and that's, we had a question here earlier on about Will you get tired mm -hmm. if you're out of shape? Yes, you, you'll get a workout yeah. in. Well, that's I the am reason out of shape, why yeah. We actually <laughs> went probably one too many heads here. Um, probably should have done three to four heads as opposed to five, but I really kind of wanted to showcase. Yeah, um, sure. I really wanted, kind of wanted to showcase the, uh, the differences and what we've got to op offer here. Now, keep in mind, there's going to be some great stuff coming here in the future, so mm -hmm. stay tuned for new clubs. Mm -hmm. um, for coming to kind of get fit there. I can't say any more right now, but um, <laughs> there's going to be some exciting new product to test, whether that be iron fitting or, or driver fitting com coming out here too. So but you're going to see, we're talking minimal changes here in, kinda in, the, in the club speed. Ball speed numbers, you can kind of see pr pretty, pretty kind of similar here as well. The 130X to give you just a little bit more ball speed. I think that's just because we've got this mm -hmm. one up here. 
that you hit pretty pretty well. Actually, yeah, a little bit more ball speed on that one went a little bit further. But I mean, this is really impressive. That launch angle, very, very similar. Um, if you look at spin rate, you can see how the slightly heavier golf shaft spun a little bit less than the lighter golf shaft by about 300 RPM. Okay. Maybe we should do more some ro robot testing with you, I guess. <laughs> oh, jeez. That, that's, that's, that's pretty good right there. Uh, that's ex and then that's exactly kind of why I would have expected. Um, yeah, kind of interesting. You know, I mean, we're talking about height and landing angle, all exceptionally good numbers ac across the board. Uh, yeah, so excellent numbers kind of across, across the board there. So it really, you know, you're the player. You're holding onto that golf club. You're the one that feels the golf shaft. Could you notice any difference in that golf shaft at all? I, I, I didn't notice. It. It's nothing major to me. Um, and I, I guess this is the type of thing I don't like, doesn't pick up for me as much in terms of the feel part of the game, in terms of the shaft. Like a 10 gram difference isn't going to be a huge one for me. Um, I would have to kind of defer to the numbers and what Trackman tells me. But um, I mean, I. I know that the LZ 6.5 is what I play, and I, I, for any, if anything, this thing kind of verifies that I have sort of the right clubs in my bag for me right now. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to dissect these kind of these, these circles here, but you can kind of, these kind of <laughs> verifies, you know, the, the club that you're kind of playing. But if we're being picky, you know, you can see that maybe the, the LZ 6.5 just, just right of center with that mm. little, little yeah. bit too flat a lie angle there, um, but it was kind of the, the kind of the most consistent mm -hmm. of, of them all there too. So, yeah, this pretty good, pretty stuff. I'm glad it re kind of reconfirms kind of yeah. what you're playing with with your irons there as well. I mean, and I, honestly, you know, I, that was not the expectation here. I, I wasn't coming in and thinking I'm gonna that 210. I got to make sure it's the one. You know, it's 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 one of those where I had some new there's some new iron models out there, and I kind of wanted to figure out, you know, I, is one of these better for me? And so. It seems like, I mean, I am happy with that dispersion right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, I'm impressed with the dispersion. Uh, I think this is, this is kind of awesome how it kind of showcases, you know, we do, we do follow up fittings here at, at Second mm -hmm. Swing as well. This is probably a little bit more kind of in depth. Normally an iron fitting takes an hour, but I've got these questions can we try to answer here, yeah, here yeah. as well too. Um, I do want to do that lie angle test here, just kind of showcase how kind of lie angle, what lie angle okay. does. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some if you want to hand me that golf club. And what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to talk about this, this golf ball here. So notice how it's got this kind of this line, this groove right through the middle of it right here. Got some face tape here. We're going to check out the kind of line. Going. I'm going to put it on the club. I'm just going to get you hit a, cup, a shot here and kind of see where this line goal is pointed. So what we're doing here is just putting this on the club there for him. And I'll give you that. And so I'll just hit a normal shot. Actually, I'm going to give you this golf ball. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got to get the actual the golf ball that you we're, were going showing to everybody. this up dead straight. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll create this, this is not going to make a difference on, on trackman numbers, so I'll just put like a, a different tag up here. I'm not worried about where the ball goes. Just want to see on the, on the club face where everything is going here. All right. All right. So let's take a look here. Where is that, where's that pointed? All right, this is this is great. This is uh, this is a, about as good as it gets with regards to kind of an, an iron fin. You're doing you're doing a great job right here. So, I'm gonna point this in front of the camera right here. So notice how we can see how that line is just a little bit. It's about one degree, maybe just one and a half degree here, where it says adjust upright. So it's pointing towards that that side where it says adjust upright. There, um, that is just showcasing that. We have the black dot right now, and that you should be playing something a little bit more upright. And then if we take a look at that shot that you hit, now don't pay attention to the spin rate when that golf ball's got a crack in it. Yeah. The spin rate's gonna be kind of way off essentially there too. But notice how the ball was just kind of a little bit to the right there. We'll notice how you missed it just a little bit on that same kind of path there, yeah. there as well. 
So it just re reconfirms the line that you should be playing mm -hmm. here as well. So there's dispersion is important. This is a great way to kind of showcase that that as well, um, where where the ball's kind of going, and then turf interaction. You could, we could always do a, a live board test there as well. I guarantee yeah. if we did this, you're probably going to catch, you know, it's going to be kind of slightly towards the the heel where you right. kind of hit there mm -hmm. as well. So we want ideally you want to have nice consistent turf interaction with the club there as well. So yeah, I, it kind of re kind of re reconfirms kind of where we, where we should mm -hmm. be with regards to everything yeah. there. So I, I'm I mean I'm very happy to have that as the result. I didn't expect to have you know everything that I was fit for ten months ago to be exactly what's right for me but um, it's a perfect result and it, it does you know kind of reaffirm the process here at second swing too that uh, you know the first time around and this is sort of like a follow-up fitting for make sure things are going well and that you know maybe if there's another new model out there if it's better for me but uh, that original process got me dialed in exactly how I needed to be dialed in yeah so I210 green dot mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend for you now if you are leaving it way, way to the right, if you're hitting it all the way to the right, I would I'd maybe question the, the grip size, but comfort is definitely kind of the most, the most important thing there as well. And one thing I also like to do is bring up in fittings is if I, one thing I always like to do and bring up is in fittings here too is how a player kind of holds onto the club. So I always like to look at that left hand. If there's a gap with, with, with on the grip right here, Try not to break a computer screen here. If there's a <laughs> gap between your between your hand right there, that would tell you the grip is a little bit too big for you. If there's no gap where you're gripping like this, so grip like that, that would showcase that the grip's just a little bit too small for you there as well. So comfort is definitely kind of mm -hmm. important, but it can influence the direction the ball is going as well. So it's important to kind of pay attention to that, mm -hmm. um, and then kind of work and kind of watch grip that you like to kind of play? What, yeah. what grip did we go with with you? Did it we was just the Tour Velvet, uh, the midsize. Okay. So, but I mean, that, and I remember doing that specific test last time too, where we kind of held the club in my hand and I had, um, I was touching, like my fingers were touching that palm around it. So yep. on the original standard size, so that's why it went up a little bit. Okay, well, that's so. kind of, this is kind of be a, a fun kind of test to kind of reconfirm everything. What I want to do now is, that's trying to take about See a few minutes here to try and catch up on a few of these questions. But okay, we've perfect. got a, lo a lot of questions here. Uh, I'll let you <laughs> kind of chime in a little bit here as well as I'm kind of looking looking at some stuff here. So let's kind of just finish up. Look here. Uh, can you explain the differences between the two types of fittings you offer? Thank you. So we have our tour van fittings at Second Swing. Um, if you want to maybe take that and kind of mm -hmm. answer the, the questions here. Uh, we have yeah, we have um, the tour van fitting at second swing. Um, that is more kind of new, new clubs. We got our tour van iron set. We got a tour van driver, or we got a tour van full bag or wedge. Um, they are free with all our fittings are free with purchase, um, free with a, m a minimum purchase. And normally, if you're buying new, it's going to cover that minimum there as well. Um, it's one of the bonuses with second swing is our fittings are free when you purchase with us. Um, and then you've got your in-flight fitting. So your in-flight fitting, that is for more for used fittings. So those are more focused on our, you know, our used clubs that we've got in our, in our bag. Now, if you can, if you go, if we go through a tour van um, iron, iron set fitting, and it's like, well, maybe these aren't new used clubs that will work best. We'll still sell you, then we won't charge you for the fitting there too. So it's definitely kind of a good option across the board. What else have we got? I'm just looking at, I'm just kind of, I mean, I know there's a lot in here. We're okay. trying to get to as much as we can. Um, I know Matt asked about the uh, potential of a combo between with the new Shrix on ZX5, ZX7. Um, and we did a video on those, and that we noted right away that that is a great option because of how they, they, they look similar, but you can tell it would be great to be blended together with them. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. And then the, uh, the lofts are actually pretty similar with them, too. I think mm -hmm. they're separated by, like, one degree, so you could blend them pretty well because they're kind of gapping and, ZX5s for sure, um, slightly more forgiving, but they, they look pretty similar looking down at it. Uh, that's one thing that kind of surprised me there too. And um, So yeah, you definitely blend. Those are probably one of the more blendable iron sets out there. Oh, Greg's looking for a shout out. Shout out to Greg. Can I have a shout out, please? Oh. <laughs> Greg, shout out to you. Thanks for joining. We really appreciate everyone for joining, comments, and also subscribing. If, um, we appreciate everyone for subscribing to our channel. We just, uh, we just hit 14,000 subscribers yesterday. I didn't touch on that, but that's been that's mm -hmm. been a fun process to see our channel grow and 
we have some uh, pretty high high goals that we want to mm -hmm. kind of get to. So this is going to be a fun process. Yeah, and I think I kind of to leave on. First of all, I will say if there's a question we, that we didn't have an answer, um, pe uh, please feel free to leave it at the bottom um, in the actual comments of the YouTube video. Um, and we'll get to that as soon as we can, of course. Um, we know we didn't get to everybody here, but um, as we kind of wrap up, we do want to get to as many uh, questions as we can and answer, and of course, uh, provide as much info as we can uh, on the second swing tour van fitting uh, uh, process. So, um, Thomas, I think that's kind of where we can maybe wrap up here. I'm very pleasantly surprised with how this went. Uh, but um, again, thank you all for watching our uh, live today. Um, we're going to try to do a lot more of this in the future. Thank you to Thomas for the fitting today as well. Uh, it was great stuff, very in depth, uh, and hopefully gave these golfers a lot of things to think about maybe when they're trying to upgrade their game. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not so surprised. I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty happy. I'm just reconfirms the the fitting that we got you in and the fact that you've enjoyed playing those clubs and it just reconfirms the outfitting process. So, yeah, thanks for joining. We appreciate it. Also, guys, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs>